Hi, you got the Blonde Guy YouTube channel. And today we're working on a Husqvarna mower again. And what we have is electrical problem. We're going to show you that here. The electrical problem we have is this melted fuse holder. It used to mount underneath uh, this corner here. Clip on right there. Mount it in there like that. And the thing got so hot that it melted when uh, the customer or friend of ours turned this PTO on up here. She had her mower running, cut her PTO on, and that's when it started smoking and about caught the lawnmower on fire. And thankfully, it quit. She cut it off. It got the... Uh, Smoked pretty bad. It melted the wire loom down here a little bit. Right there. Melted wire loom. We've already pulled this wire loom apart to uh, see if the wires were burnt down in there. And they weren't. It's just the wire loom. We're going to put a little tape around that. But what we did, we're going to demonstrate. First thing we did when we got there, we took the negative side of the cable on the battery loose. And we're going to demonstrate what we did to check to see if the PTO had caused the problem to freeze up and caused all that amperage to back up to this here fuse holder and cause it to set fire like that. But we found out that it didn't. And what we did, we took this uh, wire we have here, we put a 15 amp fuse in it, as you can see here. Put a 15 amp fuse in. We took the other end and we wired it up to the red wires we have there. And we just wrapped some tape around it and put it on there. And once we done that, the lawnmower cranked fine. The P first thing we did was we test the PTO. We turned the key on. We turned the PTO on up there without the lawnmower running. And then we heard it go click, click, off and on like it's supposed to. And we figured, well, that must be good. So we rigged this up. It's got coating on it so the blades doesn't, the connectors doesn't touch. Um, we rigged this up to the wiring. And after we done that, everything seems to be okay. So we went down to Napa this morning and we got us a new fuse holder. And right over here is what we got. We got this fuse holder and it's got a cover on it. And we think that's what the problem was that the fuse holder itself actually got some dirt up in it possibly, uh, made some poor contact. There is what's left of that 20 amp fuse right there. It just melted it. I mean, it's one that didn't burned down. I guess it may, maybe when she got the lawnmower cut off, it, it quit trying to pull battery voltages through. But time she drove it from her shed up to her house, that's when it really got hot and was smoking. So we test drove it a little bit last night for yesterday evening. Everything seems to be okay. And we're going to put that on there. I'm going to show you this here fuse holder we got. And as you can see, you, uh, it's got a little snap here. And you take that little snap there and raise that up, pull it apart, and your fuse goes right in there. And then we're going to put this fuse in and see if that works. And then once we do that, we're going to skin these wires off here. And we're going to put the fuse in and go from there. Okay, y'all just had to bear with me. <laughs> I ordered me a tripod and it still hadn't come in. Should be here tomorrow. But I'd like to never got this thing here to snap. I mean, I, I slid it together and it didn't snap. And I mean, I pushed on it hard and pushed down on it and it finally snapped. But what we're going to do now is check the resistance to make sure we got everything in there good 
like it ought to be. There it is, zero, zero, zero. And then we're gonna take some of these connectors. We'll put these on and they should be fine. And then we're gonna get some uh, shrink wrap. Okay, what we're gonna do is put this shrink wrap on here and we're gonna put a little heat to it and melt it. We'll put these ends on here like this and crimp those. And then we're gonna check and make sure we have good connection there. And we'll slide that over that and put that on there like that, heat that up. And then we're gonna do the opposite end just like that that's on the mower itself. And that should work. We're gonna do all that off camera. Okay, you slide your ends on. Self-explanatory, take your crimpers, put them in the proper place, crimp them down. Once you got them crimped, Take your uh, voltage meter, put it on ohms, in case I didn't mention that. Um, get it down there. Set it on your lowest setting to ohms down here. That says like 20,000. Put it right there. When you get done, put that in and check that. Make sure it ohms out to zero. Got a good connection there. And turn that off. And we're gonna put this in on, put the wires of the lawnmower in here, crimp that, and we should be good. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you how I crimp and put the shrink wrap on. You just take it and slide it up on there about halfway, like so. And I don't have a heat gun. So I take a cigarette lighter and just Melt it real easy. Keep it moving. Roll it over. Keep it moving till it shrinks. Don't overheat it. Just like that. And we're gonna take this other one. Do the same thing. Keep it moving. Nothing. That's a cricket lighter. I started saying nothing flips like a bit, but this is a cricket. The flame turned way up. Just like that. It's gonna do the other end the same way. Put your wire in. And be sure to put this piece on your wire first before you go ahead and crimp it, which I've done that before, getting in a hurry. Go ahead and put your insulation on there first. Then put your wire in. Just like we did here, we had it always slid back. We're gonna do that part there on the mower. Okay, there you see we got the insulation on the wire. All we gotta do is put those connect that take those blue connectors right there and slide that wire right in. And I've already got them skimped back from the test that we did earlier. Crimp it and then pull that shrink wrap over it. Should be good to go. Okay, now that we got the wires connected, before we put this insulation on, this shrink wrap, we're gonna test it. Excuse me. We'll go over here, we're gonna take the battery, stick the battery cable back on, like that. Come over here and turn the key on. I heard it click down there for the fuel pump. And there's your PTO clicking down there. Sounds like we got a good connection. All right, keys back off. I'm gonna take the battery terminal back off while we're working on it. And we're gonna shrink wrap that up and see how we go from there. Okay, there it is. And what I did, I overlapped this piece to this piece here to get a good uh, coverage. And right there at my thumb, we're gonna put some tape around that and then we're gonna take these wires and try to mount all this mess up differently. So all this mess down here doesn't rub this frame. I thought about zip tying it up here to this. And I think we may try to mount that fuse holder right there um, to make it easy to get to. Okay, here's what we got taped up. <clears throat> taped up the old wiring harness back here. Taped it up good. 
put a little extra down here on this piece and we taped this from one end all the way down we came over the top here where where the connector actually is and that's all to keep it waterproof uh keep wa uh, water off the wire here so then we go from this end and continually roll it roll a little extra right here where the wire is first before you go up on the housing and then you go back down all the way back down to where it started over here and we also put the wires back in the wire loom where it was from the factory best we could and got her all taped up and now it's just a matter of deciding where we want to mount that here or there where we put that regulator bolt in yesterday and put that in i think that's what we're going to do and if you're like me i used to take tape and try to break it but I found out later as you wrap tape around and then you just try to break it off, it stretches the end of it and then the end of it doesn't want to stick. So always keep your pair of scissors. Go ahead and cut your electrical tape with the scissors when you're getting ready to finish wrapping around. Because stretching and pulling, like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, when you stretch and pull it around, like I said, it tends to just stretch the tape and it doesn't want to stick well and that's just what i do use scissors to cut your electrical tape okay right up there is what we did we brought the wiring harness up here and zip tied it to this battery box right there you can see the wiring harness is right down in there what that done it brought it away from the frame of the, the lawnmower as you can see it's not over here and we went ahead and mounted this fuse holder right here to this bolt all i gotta do is flip that up and open it and take your fuse out and put your new one in if you need to but it's right here easily accessible before it was like i said behind this right in here i mean it was back up in here clipped on right there where that hole is i believe but we got everything taped up everything's out of the way I'm going to put the battery cable back on just stick it on right there on that screw turn the key on everything sounds okay and then we're going to hook this wire up correctly the other thing we've got to do to this lawnmower we're not going to show you the video of, of that we did a previous video already on how to properly seal a tire this tire here had zero pounds of air and that was making the deck over here touch the ground as you can see now stick my foot right there just for reference not running folks that's how much space you should have and then you can take and check this side yeah about an inch above your toe for my toe and then i come over here and do the same thing that's a quick reference to see you know is it out of shape when you go to measure these things, measure them from a fixed point like here beside your uh, wheel, measure to the ground up to the deck there. And that's like three and a quarter inches on this one. And then come over here to the other side, find a fixed point, measure to the ground, to the edge of the deck. Don't measure over here, measure in exactly the same place you measured on the other side as close as you can get to it and see if it's three and a quarter on this particular one. And that should be it on that. Everything looks good. Uh, this is the mower that we worked on before where the lady had went and got a battery and put it on. They give her this battery, which was the wrong size. I'm gonna touch on that briefly. They make them folks with the terminals in reverse. And she said, originally these terminals were sitting back here and that's what she did which that's the negative i got my finger on so with it turned around the negative was over here she put this positive cable right there on the negative and she hooked this negative here on the positive and just like that just like that she hooked it just like that with the battery turned around because that's the way it was from the factory and they like i said they give her battery with the terminals in reverse and when she did that, it shorted out her regulator. 
And that regulator there came from Napa. This fuse block came from, uh, fuse holder came from Napa. Uh, so I just want to say, you know, thanks to the guys at Napa for keeping the stuff in stock like that. Um, they keep lawnmower parts in stock. A lot of them you can find, if they don't have them, they can get lawnmower parts for you. Um, in fact, I think I ordered these lawnmower blades down here. Yeah, I got those lawnmower blades from Napa and they had them for me next day. Um, so a lot of auto parts stores don't sell lawnmower parts, but Napa is really good about doing stuff like that. If you got a Napa in your area, if you don't already know, hey, ask them if they sell lawnmower parts if you, if you happen to have them. This regulator, I'm, uh, excuse me, uh, starter solenoid here. Uh, they had this one in stock. I just walked right there and got it off the shelf. Actually, I took this with me when I went, so I wouldn't have to make another trip, and that was the problem. But what we wound up doing was, before this positive terminal would not reach this battery sitting like this because it's bolted down here, as you can see. You can see it's got a nut, double nutted right there. That terminal wouldn't reach because this wire here was turned this direction and it went back this way. It was turned this direction and back this way and would only reach right there where that sticker is. And that's how I knew that she'd got, been given the wrong battery. And like I say, they do make them in terminals reversed. Uh, let's see if this one's got a number on it. Uh, yeah, this is a UA340, excuse me, a U1340. That's a U1. And they make, they make a different one. But I don't have a different battery to show you, but what I am gonna show you is what happened to her. See how the terminals on this mower are in the back of the, back towards the uh, steering wheel. This is my positive right here. That's my negative right there. I got the battery maintainer on it right there. But that's what she did. She put it in there like it was supposed to go and hooked it up and it fried her uh, starter solenoid there. And that's what it did. Uh, these batteries, this is a uh, U1. It's the same number. Um, right off hand, I don't recall the number of the other battery. It's, it's one of the ones that it's a little bit different number, but they do make the terminals in reverse. So if you get a battery, make sure you get what you're getting. It's exactly what you've got. If not, see if your battery cables will reach like we did here. We just simply loosened this nut and swung this terminal all the way around and it barely would reach the positive. As you can see the way the battery terminals are, it would barely reach that bolted on and turned that direction. So there was no way it would have reached there before. And okay, we got that covered back up. But, and there's no way that this terminal could reach there. And like I said, this battery does have, this lawnmower does have the battery sitting in backwards. But if you notice, there's some film on there, some wet stuff. That is this product here called Fluid Film. And they're not paying me to say that, but neither is Napa, but it, it's just what I use. Uh, Fluid film is real good for rust and corrosion preventative to spray on your battery terminals and it keeps uh, keeps the batteries from corroding. So this one has some corrosion on it. So I went ahead and sprayed that one yesterday and we're gonna put this cap back on. And that's something you really need to be sure and do is try to get your caps on there best you can. And anytime you're working on a lawnmower, disconnect the negative with first. Oh, even on a car, because if that wrench hits something metal, like this one here. Now we got our battery cable disconnected over here, as you can see. 
we're going to show you what could possibly happen. Um, this is not the, even the correct size, but we're just going to demonstrate. This could come down, hit something metal. Battery could be turned back here, for example, and you could hit something like this right here is metal, depending on what you're using. You could very well hit that positive and ground out and arc your battery and mess something up. If you got a, if you're over here on the negative side, taking your battery terminal loose and you hit something that's metal, you're grounding, grounding uh, down to negative, down to the ground, it's not gonna hurt anything. So even on your cars, folks, a lot of people used to say years ago, I'll take the positive cable loose first. Well, I'm a GM owner for years and I've got a couple of General Motors vehicles now. But a lot of General Motors vehicles, they put that positive terminal right there close to the frame rail of your car. And if you put it on that positive and do that, guess what? It's the frame rail of the car and arcs. So never take one loose with the positive. Always take it loose with the negative. If it grounds out to ground, grounds out to ground, then it's perfectly fine. But like I say, get you some of this fluid film and uh, spray that on your battery terminals and that should keep the corrosion down. And like I said, the other thing we've got to do is we're going to put some slime in that tire because that tire had to have zero pounds while the other side had plenty of air. And that there was the cause of it. Um, being out of level. So we're going to take care of that. Uh, if you want to know how to use slime the proper way, and we're going to show you what we got. We got a jug right here we're going to use. Right there's my jug of slime. Uh, there, there's the right way to do it. Uh, get into my playlist or just search down through my list where I do uh, working on the Husqvarna lawnmower. Uh, look on the lawn and garden equipment repair playlist. Scroll down till you find one. This should be the latest one on this Husqvarna. And that should show you how to properly put slime in your tire. And I go into detail about how to do it the right way and why I do it that way. And we're gonna put about six pumps of slime in this one. And then we're gonna get out here and drive it. And that will slosh that slime around. But be sure and watch the video because there's some other things I say about it. Be sure and watch that video to get the details if it's, if you got cracks around your side wall or something like that. So you got the blind guy YouTube channel. <laughs> Take these glasses off. And saying, don't forget to hit that like button and give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to su subscribe to this channel. Um, we're still going to make a video on uh, tire repair on the truck out here. We may do that one later this week. To get time. We're going to do that. And that should be it. That should be what's coming up next. This was a uh, out of order. Just got the call yesterday. We decided to do the video on this. So you got the Blind Guy YouTube channel saying thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. Thank you. Share. And have a nice day.